Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today we have a video from Itcherno78 in the Tier 8 German Tech Tree Battleship, the Bismarck. And when this game was recorded back in 6.2, the Bismarck was still special in that she had the secondaries and the Turpets had the Torps, but as we all know, the Turpets has had some changes in the more recent patch that bring her more online with the Bismarck's just umbrella of doom that is the secondaries if you build the ship that way. You can also hear, because I'm a few patches back, that the intro music is still playing because when you go back to use old clients, you go back to the old bugs and glitches. Fortunately though, it seems this one is playing just fine, so at least we've got that on our side. Now, interestingly, top tier game, standard battle and hotspot, and when you look at it, a lot of tier 8, and a number of tier 6. I don't see any tier 7s. It's kind of interesting how it's just perfectly split like that. Now, I'm not a super huge fan of hotspot on standard battle, and the reason is, I just find there isn't much to do without the pull of the three caps teams can always just do a weird thing i've even watched entire teams abandon their own cap to sail over to these islands and then like one ship sail just around the outside and capture so you do have to be careful and you have to defend your base and it sure no seems to know this his guns are pointed in the right direction ready for some ships to get spotted and the aircraft carrier as well, sending his strike group, at least initially, over towards the base, but then he sees the enemy aircraft and redirects his fighters and interestingly his torp bombers too. Otherwise, not a lot happening to start the game off. We're two and a half minutes in now, I think, and uh, kind of what you expect. Destroyers have gone into the tight little islands, they're trying to do things, but it looks like that enemy CV has dropped on them, so hopefully, unlike yesterday's game where that Z-23 absolutely got destroyed, both these guys get out of there alive. And there is the first spotted enemy, and it's a hipper, sailing straight into the middle of this trio of islands, which is good news for a Cherno, because it's going to be an easy target. Just over 11k away, now inside of that. And one over Penno to the first volley. Hopefully the second can do more, and there goes the Umbrella of Doom. The secondaries open up, and quite often on the Bismarck can wind up doing a pretty hefty toll of damage. And if nothing else, it's fun to watch all those secondaries fire just spraying that hipper down, racking up the target hit. It's not doing a ton of damage, but chipping in, and that's what it's about, and ideally, hopefully getting you a couple fires. Because in battleships, you don't fire HE all that often, especially at cruisers, so any help is nice. Another overpen. Just can't get through the trolley armor of that German cruiser. However, you can see some torp bombers pass overhead, but I don't think they're going for him. They look to be going for one of the battleships, and the Hipper has turned 180 and is now perfectly side on. Will this be the time that a Cherno can land that big hit? And it is, gets the Citadel, but a Bayern finishes him off, so he doesn't get the kill. Either way, 31,000 damage in, and he's got a turn. There's that enemy Turpets, and like I said, Turpets doesn't have the secondary upgrade, so Itcherno's advantage here is keeping himself at range, and based on him already turning, he knows he has to stay six kilometers away or risk those torpedoes. And, you know, Turpets on Bismarck, as long as you can stay outside the 6k, I'd take the Bismarck, or, well, I guess now with the Turpets having the same secondaries, maybe I'd take the the turpets just to have the backup torpedoes. 
It looks like though, a perfectly side on Indianapolis has pulled his attention and rightfully so. If he can land the shells here, he's absolutely going to delete this cruiser. First ones, no luck there, a pair of overpens. And the same out of the second volley. Seems the best defense is no defense. <laughs> If you've got no armor, there is nothing for the shell to detonate on, and it'll just keep on going right through your ship. I think these will be a little off the Indy, looking to be sailing a little more obliquely than I think at Cherno Red. But in the meantime, the secondaries have just been harassing this Turpitz, who, you know, they've done the 90 degree turn, they're side on. They've probably launched torpedoes, but they're not even paying attention to Cherno because, well, it Cherno wasn't paying attention to them. So it seemed they were content to try to shoot the cruiser over in cap. And much better there. Two of the shells penetrating, almost 10,000 damage. And the Turpitz is down to half health. The secondary is still just pecking away. And this is really where the secondary builds are at their best is against battleships. Just the biggest targets to hit. Sure, there's more armor to stop them. You're not really going to get penetrating hits out of the secondaries, but you get those fires, you get the supporting damage, and things are going well. And there's the fire. Excellent. Will the Turpets put it out right away is the question. I think it's a good thing at Cherno State here because you can see only one other battleship, a Byron, and a Byron would not have been a match for these guys over here, but with it Cherno mixed in, they can definitely hold this down. Three on two, and there's no reason for a Cherno to be aggressive. He doesn't need to be, and that gives him the advantage. He can kind of just passively sail back and forth over the same chunk of water, really just making sure he doesn't eat any big damage or take any stupid damage from Torps, and he's fine. You saw the big hit on the Turpids. He puts the fire out there. I was wondering when he was going to do that. Two of them having gotten lit, and the Indianapolis sails into range. He's got the rudder over, bringing the guns on, and this Indy is probably in trouble here. And what is he doing? He's turning out. He's making himself the easiest target imaginable. Yep, there it is. Almost all that Indy's health, one volume. If you're in a cruiser, getting close to a battleship like that, you cannot turn side on. Not when the ship is about to reload. At very minimum, time the turn. Wait for them to have just fired, then slam the rudder over. Or because you had some help there, you know, just stay bow in, stay angled, and just slow right up. Try to let the battleships catch up. The Indy doing neither of those things, and the fire that the secondaries lit, having finished them off. So there is the first kill. You can see over on the other side of the map, things have gone pretty well as well. They lost a destroyer, they got an enemy one. Otherwise, they're kind of just playing passively. The enemy team really is being the aggressor in this match, and that can work just fine. As long as you kind of set up good defensive lines where you've got some overlapping potential to do damage, uh, you've got no problem in a situation like this. The only problem could be those torp bombers to uh, Eterno's starboard side, but they look to be going for that battleship near the cap. Not him. He still manages to shoot one down, though. And oddly enough, I think one of the game modes Wargaming should consider is like a port defense game mode, where one team's expected role is to sit and defend a given area of the map. I think it could be a lot of fun. Basically, single cap. Uh, I think it would be just a nice mix-up. It forces one team to be aggressive, the other can play passive, and it, it mixes up player style, because obviously on the defense side, 
if one of your guys is just super aggressive all the time, he's going to get himself killed as he runs into the bulk of the enemy fleet. Another decent hit there, and the secondaries get a fire. You can see the Byron's health slowly ticking away. The secondaries could very well finish off another ship here. One more tick, he's trying to heal through it. And ah, uh, Kutuzov gets the kill. That's two now that he's worked down to the thinnest of margins and then lost to a friendly ship who finishes him off. But things are going well. 181,000 damage. Only the one kill, but more importantly, completely locked down a flank. And the Byron got out alive. You can't ask for anything more. They were pretty much flawless in their defense of this side. No ships lost. They took four down. And yeah, Bismarck and Kutuzov came back to help, but that's what you expect teammates to do, is to come help when you can see offset numbers somewhere. Either push really hard into the enemy where you've got the advantage, or get your booty back to support your teammates. Unfortunately, we're in for a bit of a lull here, because as you can see, not much of the enemy team left, and they're kind of all across the map. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here just to cut down on the time until Itcherno is once again engaging an enemy. And here we are. As you can see, that enemy turret's just wiped out two of Itcherno's friendly ships, kind of bringing the odds a little closer to being even. And Itcherno opens fire, initially on the Bismarck, but I think the target everyone's going to be focusing on is that Tirpitz. It's time for revenge. Torps, he just wiped out two allied ships. It's time to make sure he's not in this game any longer because from this, the looks of it, Jethro is a competent player, knows how to use that ship, and uh, put it to use. RNG, a little troll there. The shell's coming up short. The one that does hit deflects, and it's only going to more than likely get one more volley in here. And it could actually be the kill. 3,000 health, zero health. So there's a kill that he didn't really work down, but got. And that's why I say you can't focus on, oh, that person just kill steal for me, or, oh, I, you know, people are going to take shots when they have them. And Cherno just shot the guns the second he came around the corner at the target. And with everyone focusing him down, he wound up getting the kill. You know, he wasn't sitting there holding his fire, waiting for everyone to work that turpits down just to try to shoot when something was on no health. And that is really where you have to differentiate. If, if a teammate is actively shooting the ship as much as you, and they just happen to be the one who, because of timing and RNG, gets the final shell in, congratulate them. They got a kill, but more importantly, there's one less enemy ship for you to worry about. The only time I really get upset myself about quote-unquote kill stealing is when you watch a ship sit there for one or two minutes just not firing, and then the second something's on like 100 hit points, the guns come to light. Because that really shows an intent to mess around. Unfortunately, this game is, it's pretty much done. That enemy Bismarck's going into the islands, so Cherno is as well. Gets the rudder over, the front guns are ready, the rear one's slowly swinging around, secondaries are in range now. It's time to do this. You can see the enemy gunfire, but I don't see return secondary fire, which means that Bismarck probably doesn't have the secondary build in already. It sure knows have a fire. 10 hits, that number is going to just keep going up. And he breaks the 200,000 damage mark. The Bismarck's going to eat one torp there, losing a chunk of health. Main guns fire once again. He just can't seem to get a decent hit. Shell's deflecting and over-penetrating. But doesn't matter. Took out some aircraft, 
continuing to close. There's no risk of torpedoes. And his rear turrets have a decent, well, had a decent shot at that carrier. Doesn't quite get there in time, so back to the Bismarck. This is where you're going to get your damage, and really at this point, it's just icing on the cake. There's not that high a chance the enemy team comes away with this one. So it's kind of just how much damage can you do before the game's over? Can you get another kill in before the game's over? And as long as you don't play outright stupidly at this point, you're fine. But I have watched people play outright stupidly, so never underestimate or overestimate teammates' capabilities, never underestimate your own. Get some more damage in, 215, you can see the fire still ticking. And he's looking away to get the guns over as he doubles back behind this island, just trying to take away firing lines this enemy Bismarck may have. Lines are shot up, guns are ready, fires, 2,000 hit points, this could be it. Picks up another kill, up to three kills, 220,000 damage, gets lit on fire. I would be all over that repair party as well, because that looks like a full repair and, well, it's not like you're saving it for anything else. So it seems that Cherno's not too concerned about his total of hit points at the end of the battle here. Just that Ryuji left, and now really no way this isn't a win. And it went the duration too, interestingly. From the way this battle kind of started off, I thought this would have been over in you know 15 or 16 minutes, but when you've got a lot of battleships left, like a Cherno's team, it can just take you so long to get anywhere that the game drags on a little. And you have to remember, these ships are doing, you know, 10 times their stated speed. Like, it says 27 knots. If you kind of do the math for the size of the map and all that, like, some of these ships are cruising around at 400 knots. So it really puts emphasis on how slow things go by in real life in uh, naval warfare. And it's one of the things that was the bane of my existence as a bridge watchkeeper, just staring out into ocean for hours upon hours at a time. And a very well played game by Icherno. 244,000 credits, 3,400 experience, Confederate, Dreadnought, high caliber, 224,000 damage, three kills, could have been five, could have been less. Just the way it worked out, and look at the fires those secondaries work, and just the secondary hits. <laughs> that is why I love this ship. It is so much fun to just sail around, and mine has manual secondaries, which is something I don't know if it Cherno's does or not. Just because you don't get to see the manual targeting, you never know if a ship has been manually targeted when they start firing. But either way, it's just too much fun not to sail around, your secondaries blasting away at everything. And top of the team, over 2,000 experience, and nothing much to say there. Very respectable result, kind of what you expected, and he played his role. Icherno held down the flank, defended the base, while the rest of the team did what they had to do, and then ultimately just went, supported, helped wipe out the couple remaining ships, and the game was won. That's kind of how you hope every World of Warships game goes. And looking at the damage, well, no surprises here. We watched it happen. Some big damage to the enemy turpits and Byron as he held down the flank, and then kind of cleaning up a couple other ships as he sailed towards that enemy cap. One thing I will drag your attention to is the damage those secondary batteries managed to do. You know, all told, between the fires and them, very respectable amount, and it's part of the reason I think this is a legitimate build. Some people say it's novelty. I think secondary builds are legitimate, useful builds. And end of the day, took home 123,000 credits, 3,400 experience, and nothing to complain about there either. Good amount, standard account to be making a profit, you're happy any day.
Anyways, thank you very much, Itcherno, for sending this in. I hope everyone enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing. As always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you later.